light as a feather, delicate as a butterfly, and larger than any other flying organism we've ever discovered. This extinct winged reptile was a living ultralight airplane. This is Quetzalcoatlus. Hi, I'm Tally Lowy Mary, and you're watching Paleologic. Today, we're talking about the carnivorous king of the Cretaceous skies, the Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus is the largest organism that we know to have ever flown. Its wingspan was massive, reaching staggering breadths of over 10 meters. For comparison, the largest living flying animal is the wandering albatross. Its wingspan can reach over three and a half meters, which is less than half that of a Quetzalcoatlus. Though it was likely covered in tiny little hairs, Quetzalcoatlus was light as a feather. Like all pterosaurs, a group of flying reptiles that were close cousins to the dinosaurs, Quetzalcoatlus had bird-like hollow bones. It likely weighed somewhere between 115 to 250 kilograms and was the largest pterosaur. It would have had roughly the same wingspan and weight as an ultralight airplane. After insects, pterosaurs were the first group of creatures to evolve powered flight, long before birds or bats. Powered flight is the ability to produce lift and stay airborne. Pterosaurs were a very successful group of reptiles indeed, having lived for over 150 million years, beginning about 250 million years ago during the Triassic period. For an idea of just how long that is, we modern humans have only been around for about 300,000 years. So far, we've found over 120 species of pterosaurs, ranging from the giant Quetzalcoatlus all the way down to about the size of a sparrow. At the beginning of the Cretaceous, however, the pterosaurs started getting larger and larger. 144 million years later, otherwise known as the present day, Quetzalcoatlus has pushed the limits of what we understand about how size influences flight. Aeronautical engineers once calculated that anything larger than a pteranodon, which had a wingspan of seven meters, would have trouble taking to the air. Then along came Quetzalcoatlus with its 10 meter long wingspan to prove everyone wrong. There were certain advantages to being the colossus of the skies. Their large wingspan and relative light weight enabled Quetzalcoatlus to take advantage of air currents and save energy while soaring instead of needing to flap their wings to fly. The trade-off here is that the larger the wingspan, the less maneuverable Quetzalcoatlus would have been and the more reliant on the weather. As the climate shifted in the late Cretaceous, high winds likely would have plagued the region in which they lived, possibly contributing to the overall demise of these flying giants. Quetzalcoatlus was probably a carnivore, but it wasn't dive-bombing dinosaurs and hauling them off to feast upon. While there are many theories on what it ate, the most recent hypothesis was that it waded in water and fed on fish like modern herons. As ancient as Quetzalcoatlus is, it's relatively new on the paleontology scene. The very first fossils unearthed were from a Quetzalcoatlus northropi, which were found just over 50 years ago by a University of Texas student, Douglas A. Lawson, in Big Bend National Park in Texas. This specimen, the largest ever found, was the holotype, the single specimen on which the species description and name are based. The issue, however, was that the fossils of that original Quetzalcoatlus only belonged to a single wing, with no bones of the rest of the body to be found. So how did they figure out that this holotype had a 10-meter wingspan? This is where another, more complete Quetzalcoatlus example came into play. 
This example, which was later determined to be its own species, had a much smaller wingspan of about five and a half meters. Paleontologists were then able to take the measurements from these more complete fossils to extrapolate just how big the largest Quetzalcoatlus really was. Fitting with its status as the grandest of the flying reptiles, in 1975, Lawson named it after the ancient Mesoamerican feathered serpent deity Quetzalcoatl. Even more recently in 2021, that smaller species of Quetzalcoatlus, which had since remained unnamed, was finally given the moniker Quetzalcoatlus lawsoni after Quetzalcoatlus northropi's discoverer. This new species was found about 40 kilometers away from the OG Quetzalcoatlus in a different part of Big Bend National Park. Big Bend National Park is known as one of the world's true jewels of paleontology. With a geology spanning half a billion years, it's not just famous for producing the first Quetzalcoatlus fossils, but it's also one of the few sites in the world that records the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary. This thin layer of rock marks the point in time 66 million years ago when the Cretaceous period ended and the Paleogene period began better known as the extinction event that killed the dinosaurs and ended the age of reptiles. This first and largest Quetzalcoatlus was found about 1.5 meters below that boundary, meaning that in addition to being one of the largest pterosaurs, it was also one of the last, having lived somewhere between 66 and 68 million years ago. Along with the dinosaurs, plesiosaurs, ichthyosaurs, and other ruling reptiles, Pterosaurs like Quetzalcoatlus were wiped out during the KPG extinction, which ushered in the opportunity for other flighted animals, like birds, to find their place in the skies. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for joining me on this journey through time. I'll see you later.